File systems are your interface to store your data. Modern file systems offer a hierarchical view of your data, though historically file systems have been flat. Now we'll discuss some of the common file systems. We'll start with FAT. FAT stands for File Allocation Table. It is a relatively old file system. Files are limited to 4 GB in size and the file names are case insensitive. It has a benefit of being widely portable, being available on many platforms. For this reason, storage devices are pre-formatted as FAT, just so less technical users don't assume the device is broken and return it. Its portability makes it useful for USB flash drives and the partition for your boot. It would be a poor choice for your root file system. Next is NTFS. This is Microsoft's primary file system. Its data structure don't limit the maximum file size to 4 GB. NTFS is case sensitive but not through the Windows API which maintains case insensitivity for compatibility with older software that assumes insensitivity since it was dealing with FAT. It is a better choice for storage media as Linux is also able to read it. It is still advisable to use NTFS as your root file system on Linux since its primary use is reading disks that are also used by Windows machines rather than being an installation's root file system. The next file system is ext2, ext3 and ext4. The ext file systems are Linux primary file systems and are usually the default options when installing Unix distributions. Despite having a similar name, they are different beasts. ext2 is rather primitive, only really useful with old bootloaders. ext3 is more advanced, though active development has moved on to ext4. ext4 supports journaling, uses extents for its storage and supports extended attributes where additional metadata can be assigned to a file. There are third party tools to read ext file systems for Windows but NTFS support to Linux is better than ext support in Windows. Next is XFS. XFS is a development from Silicon Graphics. It extends ext4's feature including the ability to take snapshots of the logical state of the file system and was source of extended attributes. It is available on IRIX and Linux, so portability is not its strong point, hence would not be useful on USB flash drive, but it is an excellent choice for your root file system. Next is ZFS. ZFS is a product of Sun Microsystem, later brought by Oracle. It is a very advanced file system, offering all the features mentioned above plus more. This is a copy on write file system, unlike the above, which were either journaling or wrote to the blocks directly. Being copy on write allows for deduplication, since if multiple files have the same data, the file system can point both files to the same data. Since if it's changed in one file, the other one won't have its data changed. Live file system checking is possible with the scrub command. So downtime is not needed to perform maintenance. It can use multiple physical devices as its storage pool. Its license is incompatible 
with the Linux kernel. So kernel support is provided by a third party module, which makes it possible that the kernel update would leave your file system unreadable since the ZFS kernel module is unreadable. Loading an external kernel module is slower than it being built in. So this impact boot speed, despite its complexity, ZFS is also available on the Solaris and BSD Unisys. The next file system is BTRFS. Works on BTRFS was initiated by Oracle to be a competitor of ZFS. This is no longer the motivation factor since Oracle acquired Sun, but BTRFS is likely to become the default Linux file system in the future. It is nearly as featureful as ZFS, only missing the online deduplication, which the BTRFS developers expect to complete in the couple of Linux kernel releases. Its designs allow for a transition between EXT and BTRFS with the BTRFS convert tool by saving the EXT metadata elsewhere and remapping EXT's data to BTRFS extents. It still offers the original file system's data as a read-only disk image that can be mounted. Reverting back to the EXT is done by reinstalling the EXT metadata. But unfortunately, it has a reputation of being unstable, corrupting your data and becoming unstable. But this is a natural stage of a file system maturity.